Topaz internment camp signifies one of the greatest failures in and of American history. Join us for the next few minutes as we journey back in time to the 1940s. Topaz internment camp was a Japanese relocation center used for three years during World War II. Topaz, located in Millard County, affected Utah because the economy boomed and there were a lot of immigrants who were forced to come live in the internment camp. Topaz opened on September 11, 1942, and closed on October 31, 1945. Despite the United States' triumph of winning the war, tragedy was more prominent as we were unconstitutional when we interned Japanese and Japanese Americans. As a matter of fact, there is still much racism against Asian and Asian culture in the United States of America today. You may be asking why Japanese and Japanese Americans had to be sent to internment camps, also known as relocation centers, in the first place. The answer lies in the story of Pearl. On December 7, 1941, at around 8 a.m. in Hawaii, Japanese planes swooped down in an attempt to destroy the U.S.'s Pacific fleet so that they would be able to fight back as the Japanese spread throughout the Pacific Ocean. This surprise attack had damaged every one of the nine battleships that were in Pearl Harbor that day and had managed to destroy two of them beyond repair. The attack also managed to damage at least 300 American airplanes. In total, 2,403 people were killed and about 1,000 were wounded. Despite all of the harm that was done, it wasn't very worth it for Japan, as battleships were not very important to the Navy at that time. Rather, aircraft carriers were. However, none of the U.S.'s aircraft carriers were in Pearl Harbor that day. There had long been tension between the two countries after the U.S. opposed Japan invading countries such as China. Yet, war had never broken out. But Pearl Harbor tested the limits, and in return of this attack, the U.S. declared war on Japan the very next day. But even before World War II and the bombing of Pearl Harbor, many Americans were already very racist against Asians. In fact, there was a law that stated if you were Asian or of Asian descent, you could not become a citizen of the United States. This was known as the Chinese Exclusion Act. Anyhow, the bombing of Pearl Harbor truly set people off to believe that Japanese people in America were spies. It's crazy to think about a six-year-old child being a spy. But in the 1940s, wartime hysteria took over, leading to all Japanese or people of Japanese heritage to be put in internment camps and believe things that today we would consider almost impossible. We Americans were really just acting on fear. A question that still stands today is what President Roosevelt could have done instead of imprisoning so many innocent people. The governor of Hawaii suggested interviewing all Japanese citizens to prove themselves, but leadership was lacking in the government, and so Lieutenant John DeWitt was put in charge of this crisis. He decided that the best, most convenient solution was to contain the Japanese people in controlled areas to monitor their activity. Dewitt was an older man, and this could very well be his last major assignment. This was his final battle. Dewitt wanted to show immense power, and Japanese internment was his way of doing so. One short-term change of the Topaz camp is seen taking place in the lives of the individuals who are interned. Many people of Japanese descent who lived in America, specifically along the West Coast, after the bombing of Pearl Harbor would be sent to one of ten relocation centers. One of the said camps was in Utah. This clearly would have had a massive impact on the people's lives as their whole lifestyles were thrown into the air, all because of the fear that the United States was feeling at that time. These people were forced to sell their property to the government and compelled to pack up their belongings and take what they could carry to the place that would be their home for the next three years. A short-term effect of Topaz on Utah can also be seen in the censuses from 1940 and 1950. They show us a bit about where the people interned at Topaz may have gone after being released. 
The census has shown that around 60% of the internees return to California at some point, even if they might have stayed in or nearby Utah shortly after being released. Once they returned, these people were allowed to buy back the lands they, they had been forced to sell to the government. The amazing thing about Japanese internment camps was that they functioned like a normal society, and they not only functioned, but they thrived. There were many internees who were very angry and disbelieving that America was capable of such inhumane behavior. The Japanese camps had things that were essential to any society, like teachers, plumbers, and grocers. They also had families, and those families formed bonds with one another. Not only that, but they also worked to create a society that will not soon be forgotten. Topaz internment camp did not only affect Utah for three years. In fact, the site of where the Topaz camp stood was made a National Historic Landmark in 2007, 62 years after the camp closed. It remains there today, and there's a museum which has many artifacts and interesting facts. After Topaz closed, there were some internees and their descendants who decided to defend their rights. There was also a Supreme Court case about whether or not Executive Order 9066, the internment of Japanese Americans, was constitutional. Eventually, the court sided with the government, saying the need for espionage outweighed the rights of people with Japanese American descent. During that case, it is believed someone withheld a document from the court. They stated there was never any real evidence people with Japanese American descent were spies or enemies. Nevertheless, it has definitely had an impact on this nation. Even though Japanese internment is a very sad and unconstitutional part of our history, it is still important to learn about so we can ensure that this kind of tragedy will never manifest itself again in our country.